Welcome to how to use a syringe pump. This particular syringe pump is a Medfusion 3500 and this is a way for us to give our medications to infants in a small amount of volume. You'll see these in the ICUs but also sometimes in pediatrics. It prevents us having to use 20 to 25 mLs to flush a medication in a standard IV pump. So you will need, of course, whatever your approved cleaning agent is. Microbore tubing. Now, I just have some that was, it's a couple months old. It's not working the best now, but it's really thin tubing. And if you can look at the length of this tubing, it's approximately 60 centimeters. But it only takes 0 0.48 milliliters to flush. Lots of room to move around, but little bitty amount of fluid to flush it. Protocol is to leave a Carosa hot dog cap, as we call it, on the male end, and then the hamburger cap on a port on the female end. So we're going to turn it on. All right, here's power button. Give it a minute to do its thing. You want to make sure you know where the plug is because these do use battery fast. Give it a minute to self-test. Now, most of these settings are in ICU. If you have a pump that opens to these, you need to hit the seven button. That's the anesthesiology. And then it's going to give what we're looking for. Now, ICU settings, you can input the drugs or dose per kilograms per minute and so forth. We're going to use number six, mLs per hour, or eight volume over time. So I'm going to push number six. And then this particular one has two syringe types that are listed. We do have a third one called Zeremo, and that works with our sodium chloride flushes. And that's the ZR flush. Let's see if you can see it, the ones that we use here, that ZR flush, it's by Teremo. Otherwise, we're going to push two for Monojet. So look at your syringe and see what it has on it. This one works with the Monojet. So I'm going to push two. I'm going to make it be quiet over here. It wants me to load the syringe. Some of these want you to turn it on and select your syringe before you load it. Others do not. So this one is angry at me because it says I didn't load the syringe. So I'm going to load the syringe now. It's a little hard. Usually you're going to need two hands, but I'm going to push back on this little piece. Do you see how this piece comes out right here? This little piece right here. Okay. So I'm going to try to push down with one hand and stick it in there. So you see how that is in between there? Now we flip this top piece down onto the syringe. And then we're going to squeeze and push this here and lock the end of it so it looks like this. Perfect. The other side of our tubing needs to be wrapped into this little section. If you have not yet, let me push the silent button again, primed your tubing, you could do it at this time after confirming your syringe. Confirm. You could then... Yeah, load it. Um, hit the bolus button after you program and it will bolus that 0.48. Otherwise, we have to leave them by policy flushed with saline. Now, I have an old one from a couple months ago, so it's got crystallized saline in it, you can see. So I can't operate this for very long, but I'll show you what to do. So if I have 10 cc's in my syringe and almost 0.5 in my tubing, I need at least 10.5 to give my medication, correct? Yes. However, most IVs have an extension set on it, and it takes about 1 ml to flush the extension set. So if I'm giving my patient 10 mls of, let's say, ampicillin, then I need to add another 1.5 to completely flush all of the tubing here and flush the extension set on my patient's IV. So I'm going to set my dose as a total dose of 11.5 cc's. 
Ampicillin is a 30 minute infusion. So I have to set mLs per hour. So if I have 11.5 milliliters, I want to go in in 30 minutes. Yes, it's going to be 23, push 23 mLs per hour. And then I'm gonna hit the enter button. And then it says, is this right? And I'm gonna say, yes, that looks good. And I'm gonna hit this star button or push the star button here in green. And then this will light up that says that it's infusing into my patient. Now mind you, I should have already flushed my patient's IV line to make sure that it is patent and then clean it off and attach the end of this tubing to my patient. Please note that this will alarm a near empty about one ml before the end of the syringe to let you know to go get your flush. And then it will alarm again when it is completely empty. Now it's gonna alarm really soon because it's unable to push through that dried um, saline. So I am going to shut it off now and tell you goodbye. So I'm gonna hit the alarm just in case. We'll stop, alarm, and then we're gonna hold it down to power it off. And there's our syringe pump.